know about the pistachio nut tree, Pistachia vera, that gives us delicious pistachios? But do you know about his cousin, Pistachia lentiscus, commonly known as the mastic tree? Well, I certainly didn't until recently. <laughs> I suppose that's because I recently moved to Mallorca and Pistachia lentiscus is a characteristic evergreen shrub of the Mediterranean Maquis and it grows naturally only in these regions and you cannot miss it, it literally grows everywhere and in summer it's the only green thing around because everything else is so dry. So Pistachia lentiscus is from the Anacardaceae family and you wouldn't think it by the look of it, but that's actually the same family than the sumac, the cashew nut tree, and the mango tree. Weird, no? Now, let's take a look at the plant. So, it's an evergreen shrub. That means that it's green all throughout the year, which is really nice. Uh, next, if you crush the leaves, there's a resinous aroma. Mmm, smells very really nice. Now, here's the hard part. So, the leaves are alternate and compound peripinate. For example, let's take the branch. So you see, on this branch, the leaves are going to be disposed in a certain way. And so here you can see that the leaves appear alternately, one after each other, instead of being opposite each other. Then, let me take what I call a leaf. So this is a leaf. This is a compound leaf, okay? And I'm not talking about this guy or this guy or this guy. No, this is not a leaf, okay? The whole structure is a leaf, okay? So these little leaves are actually leaflets and all the leaflets together make up one leaf. So this is a compound leaf. See, not that complicated. And peripinate, all it means is that the leaflets are evenly distributed on either side of the leaf's stem. And also, there's no terminal leaflet right here. Okay, that's what parapinate means. So, a leaf, a pistachia lentiscus leaf. Pistachia lentiscus produces a droop, which is a fleshy fruit that has a single hard stone that encloses a seed. Uh, so for example, uh, peaches, plums, cherries, that sort of thing. Uh, the droop is red and it turns black when it's ripe. Now, it's edible, but it's not commonly eaten. Uh, some say that it has a tart raisin taste. Now, the bark is what is really interesting with this plant and it's what the mastic tree is most famous for, especially in Greece. So you see, superficial cuts are made in the bark to extract liquid resin that drips down and that's dried up later on. And this gives mastic gum or mastic resin, if you prefer. And this mastic gum has been used since ancient Greece where they used it as chewing gum because it's a breath freshener. So that's where its name comes from, because mastic, to masticate. So as a spice, it is used to flavor cakes, pastries, liquors, and it's even used to make cheese. And what's crazy is that mastic gum is only produced in the Greek island of Chios in the Aegean Sea. Now, why is that? Is it because of the climatic conditions that are perfect or the soil? Well, no, it's literally because the island's economy depends so much on the production of mastic gum that it has been established by the European Union as a Greek product. And only Greece has the right to produce this mastic gum. 
which is pretty crazy. And a lot of people think it's because it only grows in Greece and on that particular island. Pistachia lentiscus has very interesting medicinal properties. Indeed, mastic resin is very good for the digestive system. And mastic oil is often used for skin disorders or afflictions because it has antibacterial and antifungal properties. So you see, pistachia lentiscus is a very versatile plant. It's edible, it's medicinal, can be used in many ways, and it decorates beautifully the Mediterranean landscape. So we're really lucky to have it growing naturally here. I hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you with the next plant. Bye. Mm -hmm.